are in listen-only mode. Hi, Ed. Uh, welcome to the, uh, I believe, the 34th uh, webinar in the Auto, uh, AutoCAD series. Um, today we're going to be taking a look at uh, line types. And uh, Volker will cover um, not only you know, how to load line types, but also how to create line types and uh, into some fun and exciting uh, um, tools to be able to show you how to do that. Uh, with me today, uh, by the way, I'm Dave Plossy, if I didn't mention that. Uh, with me today is uh, Victoria Studley and Sarah Emsley, as well as Nauman, uh, who will be uh, helping answer questions in the background. So um, you know, feel free to answer or ask questions as you go through. Um, before we get started, like we always do, we just want to do a real quick uh, survey, find out if this is uh, your first uh, time to one of these webinars or if you've uh, been to one before. And after I let this run for a little bit, I'll go ahead and show the results here. And uh, looks like the vast majority of people have been to one of these already, which is no surprise since we've been doing them for a while. All right, so I'll go ahead and close that and just share it so you can see what the results were. And... Hide that. And we'll also want to just know uh, which application you're using uh, the most of. So using AutoCAD or LT, or one of the verticals, or something else. And uh, today looks like uh, more people are using AutoCAD than anything else. And we'll go ahead and close that. So. We've got a bunch of people using some of the verticals as well, so that's great. And one more quick question before we get started. And uh, just like to know uh, what kind of social media you like to use when uh, interacting with Autodesk. And this is kind of a new question. Um, survey question for me, but interesting. So, either uh, don't use it or um, discussion groups, forums seems to be the most common item there. All right. So, with that, I will go ahead and uh, turn this over to Volker and let's get started with the actual uh, webinar. All right. Thank you, Dave. Uh, and thank you for all of those who are attending for a um, first time, uh, it's good to have you here. And of course, all those returning attendees, it's always good to have you back. And I'm hoping everybody can hear me. Um, uh, I know I can hear myself, so. Um, I can hear you. So. OK, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> all right, so we're going to talk about line types, but like we do in every webinar, uh, we do have some housekeeping to take care of. So feel free to leave your questions in the chat window. Uh, sometimes we're able to answer them while we're doing the webinar. Other times um, we will, um, of course, always actually take as many questions as we can after the webinar. And even after it's over, we tend to stick around nowadays to answer your questions. Uh, the session will be recorded and the slide deck with all the resource links in it, as well as the data set can be downloaded from this link. This link, as well as some additional links for our uh, Knowledge Network and the uh, landing page uh, will be available in a follow-up survey. Victoria is also gonna go ahead and Paste, sorry, lost my train of thought. Paste these links into the chat window. Uh, but the data set will not be available till after the presentation. Uh, you can also uh, leave questions after the presentation on our landing page. You can also send us feedback on the current webinar, any future ideas. We're always open to ideas and suggestions for these webinars to the Autodesk dot help dot webinars at autodesk.com email address. Please be sure to put build your AutoCAD IQ in the subject line because we do have other webinars as well. 
Our landing page also has a link to the YouTube recordings of previous webinars, so a good place to uh, see what um, what webinars we've had. You may even want to watch them, as well as a schedule of our upcoming webinars. Uh, this is an older schedule on the image you're seeing, and I believe there's only one on the uh, event list right now. Uh, I'll be showing, giving you a heads up on what's coming up in the future at the end of this demo. Uh, these are the previous webinars we've had that you can find on YouTube. Uh, not all of them. Uh, again, we're at number 34 right now. Uh, so um, 21 to 33 is what I have listed up there. Again, you can find those also on the YouTube channel under the playlist AutoCAD Exchange Build Your AutoCAD IQ. Since we are product support, we do need to let you know about things that are happening in the AutoCAD world. Uh, so these links, which are in, uh, you can find in the PowerPoint or on directly on the AKN website, uh, discuss some of the most uh, frequent articles which have been viewed at AKN at this time, and it does keep you informed about current issues, hot fixes that have been made available, as well as service packs. So check out the AKN. There are also great tutorials, uh, direct links to the Autodesk community, uh, the discussion groups, that is. Um, coming up next week, we are actually going to preempt the webinar in order to contribute to the AutoCAD Answer Day event. I'd encourage you to think of any questions you may have that um, are constantly popping up, feature requests, um, pro things you've had problems with, whatever, and join us as we answer your questions. This is going to be May 7th, 6 a.m. through 6 p.m. Pacific time. And the people who are participating, it's not just us in product support. Okay, people working customer service in the installation and licensing team, Autodesk Developers Network, the product team, development team, as well as the managers of the communities, they will be there to take your questions. We will all be there to answer those questions, and uh, we are hoping that uh, we can make this a worthwhile and exciting event for you. For those of you uh, in the poll, we had asked about the social media to interact. Um, this event does take place in one of our forums. If you haven't been to the forums before, uh, I encourage you to go there, not just to leave questions about problems you have, but there are a lot of great people there who attend those uh, that community of forums, uh, Nauman, for example, who's participating in this webinar is one of the expert elites who contributes quite a bit of information to assist users with their questions, how to do things, how to resolve certain problems. It's a great place to, to go get answers. That being said, let's take a look at the agenda this week. The first thing we're going to talk about is me paying my dues or kudos, I should say, to those who have uh, provided insight on these webinars. In this case here, last week we had a, um, a question brought up about selecting segments of a polyline and how you could do that. And uh, at that time, I'd forgotten all about this particular control key to isolate selection of polyline segments. So C3D underscore Tom R followed up with me after the webinar and pointed out the proper way to do this, and kudos to him. I am leaving a link for this in the uh, presentation, which goes to a screencast recording of how we can select individual segments of a polyline. Check it out. Also, screencast has multiple or numerous other videos available uh, with how-tos for AutoCAD. So, Thank you, Tom. Appreciate that feedback. Today, we're going to look at line types. We're going to take a look at how to load 
line types, which we need to do in order to use them. We'll talk about some of the system variables that affect line types. Most of us are all aware of LT scale, but there are others such as MS LT scale, PS LT scale, CELT scale, P line gen, uh, just to name a few. We're going to take a uh, talk about the difference between standard line types and what are called complex line types. And we'll take a look at building a custom line type. Uh, primarily, the Voker method is going to be used here. Uh, I think most of us use this method. I, I'm just claiming the name for this webinar. All right. So let us go ahead and go to the demo. And uh, again, just uh, remember, go ahead and leave your feedback uh, in the chat window. If you have any questions or, or comments uh, that you'd like to point out. So, all right, it appears that my screen is appearing and we have AutoCAD LT in front of us. So in this particular example, I've just got a, uh, uh, an example of a, a bracket here. And we have some line work that is yellow, which should indicate we have a center line. Obviously, it's not a center line, and that is because in any new drawing that we create in AutoCAD, if we go into, I'll use the LT command to bring up the, what is called the line type manager. If we go into this, you'll see that we only have one line type available to us, and that is continuous. It's been this way since day one, and the reasoning behind this really back then, you know, why not include all those line types? Well, back in the day, we were limited to resources, you know, less RAM, uh, both on the video card and, and the computer. So uh, as much stuff as possible was left out of the template drawing and the user was able to load this, uh, the additional information they needed. Uh, as they needed it. Uh, if we go into the ribbon home tab properties panel, you'll see we have our line type uh, listed here as well. Again, nothing there, but here is where we can also get to that line type manager. LT is what I typed. You can also type um, line type. Get back to this here in a moment. So we'll take a look at this here. We need to have a line type here. And the first thing we need to do is load it. We can load it through that line type manager, which I'll use later. Right now, I'm going to go ahead and use the layer properties manager. And you'll see we have a bunch of layers. And they all have continuous line types. I'm going to go ahead and just click on continuous here, which brings up that line type. It does not show the by layer or by block, just the fact that we have a solid or continuous line type. What I need to do is load the line type. So it takes me to a default line type. There are actually two line types, and I'll show you uh, files in AutoCAD by default or AutoCAD LT, whichever one you're using. Um, we'll discuss more that some more in a moment. We have numerous line types here, and these are all ACAD ISO here. These are all metrically scaled line types. Uh, in my opinion, and this is a personal preference, I don't even think they belong here because everything here is scaled 25.4 times the size. These line types down here are all imperial scaled. And I'll discuss that some more as we talk about line type definitions. Right now, I'm just going to go ahead and take the center line type. And I'm going to click OK. So I've clicked OK here. And that loads the line type in the drawing. But it has not assigned it to the layer that I wanted it assigned to. It just loads it in the drawing, like I said. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Continuous here again, select Center, click OK, and voila, there's my line type. 
So this line type appears the, the way I, I would expect it to appear. And the appearance of the line type in the drawing is based upon what is called the LT scale or line type scale. This is available from the command line by typing LT scale. And you'll see the default value is 1, which is equivalent to my drawing scale. Okay, everything 1 to 1. If the drawing is a large drawing, say um, we have an uh, architectural drawing, then you may need to change the LT scale to reflect the size of the objects in the drawing. Now this has been uh, simplified since AutoCAD 2008 by adding what is called the annotation scale and what is called a MS LT scale, model space LT scale. Uh, we'll talk about that in a moment as well. Right now, let's see how this affects our line type, this LT scale. I'm going to go ahead and change it to 2. And you'll see that the definition has changed by increasing the scale factor of the line. This is independent from the AutoCAD scale command. That there does not really, uh, to, in, in this case, it's OK. But it does, to me, it's not a good representation of a center line. In fact, using LT scale 1 makes it look a lot nicer. Now, the Autodesk help, AutoCAD help, it recommends that the global LT scale of 1 is um, recommended. And that may be the case. But what you will typically find in a lot of CAD environments, and this is my preference as well, uh, which doesn't mean much to anybody else but me, um, is that I like to have my LT scale be half of the drawing scale and see how much more definition I get out of that. Now, again, this is a personal preference. And I think one thing to be aware of is that most organizations are going to have their CAD standards. So don't deviate from those. And later on, when we work with creating a line type, you know, keep in mind you have those CAD standards. And if you're going to do anything to change things in your CAD environment, please check with your CAD manager or CAD lead or administrator, whoever you need to check with to modify things. Um, I'm showing you how to do it, but that doesn't mean you should just go ahead and do it. Volker, were you a CAD manager in a previous life? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> After my drafter's life. <laughs> all right. Um, so that is LT scale. Now, this is global to all line types in the drawing. Now. Uh, there may be a scenario where, let's go ahead and uh, go back into the uh, layer property managers right, manager right now. And what I'm going to do is select another line type. I'll show you. We can actually load more than one at a time. We'll do that in a moment. I'm going to go ahead and take a hidden line type. And I'll click OK. And I'm going to go ahead and assign it to the uh, hidden layer. There we go. All right. And I'm just going to leave that color white. I'll set that layer current. Oops, current. There we go. All right. So there may be cases where I want a hidden line or something to be placed right here. And right now, this is enough of a dash to show that line type. But what if I needed a little more definition? Uh, because sometimes you may draw something in a gap that is too small to accommodate the current line type scale. What we have is by selecting this object here, I can change the line type scale. So one thing to be aware of if, is that this is not the global LT scale right here. This is called the CELT scale. And what that stood for was current entity scale. 
Okay. Nowadays we call it current object scale, but current entity is what it used to be called. So it is the CELT scale system variable. So I'm going to change it to 0.5. And notice how the definition changes here. Now, the CELT scale applies to that object I selected. And if I were now to change this here to 0.5, and let's go ahead and go back to the center line. Okay, I'm just going to draw an arbitrary line right now. Okay, notice how the definition of this center line now changes. This is at half, is at an LT scale or global line type scale of 0.5. This is now at half of the global line type scale. Anything new I draw having changed this to a scale of 0.5 will always be half of whatever the global LT scale is. Let's go ahead and change LT scale to 1. All right, notice how this is updated. This is updated as well, as well as this one, but both of these are still at half of the global line type scale. You also need to be careful because Let's say you do this change, and then you continue working in the drawing, or somebody else works with it, and they're using different uh, line types on different layers, and they're not turning out the way they did when they previously drew them the previous day. All right, They're always going to be drawing at half the line type scale unless they notice that this has been changed. Once I change this back to 1, and draw something like this here. So add selected. Everything appears as it should. Okay, so this is now be, being drawn. Um, oops, that one's, I added selected on a LTS self scale object. <laughs> All right, that was dumb. Awkward moment. You guys who've been here, <laughs> you all know me well enough by now. All right, let's try that again. Arbitrary line work here. Yeah, there we go. So that is now drawn at the global scale. So I hope that made sense, what I was demonstrating there. LT scale and self scale. Um, this is an override. That's what you need to be aware of. So let's take a look in paper space. Back in the day, um, we would have to work with line types a little bit different when it came to different scale factors and viewports. We had the LT scale factor and we had the uh, PS LT scale factor. So what paper space line type scale did was it allowed the line work to look consistent throughout the drawing so that um, um, regardless of the viewport scale, the line type itself would look the same, but it would never scale according to the viewport size. Okay, so basically what we have now are we have a system variable called MS LT scale. This by default is set to 1, and if I set that to 0, it turns off automatic scaling of a line type. We also have our LT scale, which is set to 1 right now. And we have that paper space LT scale, which is set to 1. I'm going to turn that off by setting it to 0. And nothing has happened right now because I am in paper space. Once I do a regeneration of the drawing, this viewport here is um, 1 to 2, and this one here is 1 to 1. And maybe I'll go ahead and scooch this over a bit. And you can see the difference in the definition of the line work. This is a little longer because that line type is now scaling according to the scale factor of the viewport. If we want this to look identical, we want to go ahead and set PSLT scale to 1. 
REA for regen all. Now the line work is the same here. And if I wanted to look consistent according to the scale factor, I'm going to go ahead and turn on MSLT scale. Need to do a regen update. Because of the small scale factor, you're probably not seeing much of a difference. But now they look the same according to um, how we want the lines to be represented in the drawing. Uh, the scale does not look abnormally large. This line type doesn't for the object in the viewport. Um, keep that in mind. Always keep in mind, too, that whenever you're doing line work in paper space and you change the lines, things may not um, appear as expected until you do a regen all. Also, a paper, if you do change paper space scale, PSLT scale, um, be aware that it applies per layout, okay? So uh, any new layouts, um, if, it, if you're wanting to change it from the default, uh, be sure to remember that you need to assign those scale factors to the layout. All right, let's get back into some nitty gritty here. We're going to take a look now at creating a line type. And, um, oh, one thing I'm going to include in the data set, I actually meant to have it open, ding, dang it, is, whoops, is um, I have a little spreadsheet that I'll have here. So for those of you who are unfamiliar with, um, let's say, LT scale, I was talking about how you would have to have an a line type scale um, be increased for, say, an architectural drawing. Uh, here's a good um, little cheat sheet I used back in the day, and I'm talking a long time ago. No fancy macros in this, all right? But an eighth inch equals a foot. Well, the scale factor of that drawing is 96. So typically, I would have my LT scale uh, be set at a scale factor of 48 to be half of that 96. This was obviously designed for text, uh, but um, just have, I would have this for the um, LT scale, or you could just use that value for your LT scale. I, it may uh, help some of you. Most of us nowadays are using annotative scaling, so we really don't have to think about it, but we may not know exactly what is all this about, okay? So a uh, good little cheat sheet to have, and I'll have that available for you. Let's take a look at uh, working with line types. So first thing to be aware of is that using, I typed LT at the command line, by the way, is that we have a couple of different line types available to us by default. And these are the um, uh, L, either ACAD LT or ACAD.LIN, as well as the ACAD LT ISO.LIN. Now, the ISO, let's go ahead and load this here real quick. The ISO LIN file is all for metrically scaled um, line types. Okay, so they're probably not the ones you want to use in your imperial drawings, but they're pretty much the same as with the um, ACAD line command, which is this line type file here. And all this is is a text file. Okay, so what I'm going to work with is my own line type file. And typically, when I was working on um, a, as a drafter, I would actually have two line type files, one just for imperial, one just for metric. In this case, I've just modified the default LT line type file and added some custom line types. So kind of note the descriptions here. What I'm going to do is go into a text editor, and I am going to go ahead and open up that particular line type file. There are a couple of different ways to create line types. One, you can type minus or hyphen line type, and that allows you to create the line type from the command line. We're not going to do that. 
in other ways, if you're using AutoCAD, the full-blown version, not AutoCAD LT, so I probably should have gone there first, is under um, the Express Tools, we actually have a couple of cool tools here. Uh, make Line Type and Make Shape. So the shape would be used to represent an object like a, a, a bar object or a, uh, a symbol for the batting or whatever kind of symbol you want to make. And then Make Line Type will allow you to create a line type out of that. Um, out of that, um, any line work you have, as well as adding the shape to it. Uh, since we're working with AutoCAD LT, and since uh, it's good to know what the heck's going on with line types, we're going to do this through the text editor. Uh, although this is copyrighted 2015, for the most part, it is very similar to the first version of the line type definition file. So what we have listed here, not in the order that you see it in the line type window, okay? is we have uh, pretty much everything in an alphabetic order. So um, if we take a look, here we have simple line types, and these go all the way back. Uh, and basically, they are just a series of representations, so the name of the line type, uh, a description of the line type, as well as how that line type is defined. We'll talk about this in, the mo in a moment. Um, oh, by the way, you may see here border, border 2, border x2, okay, center, center 2, center x2. Well, notice this is 0.5x. This is twice. This is basically like saying, hey, I want to use the center line, but I want an LT scale of half. Um, I'm going to use the center line, but I want it to be twice the LT scale, okay? So uh, these were used back in the day. I hardly ever use these since I've just changed my system variables, uh, but you can use these just as easily and even create your own. So we're probably familiar with all these. And then here's our ISO line types. If you'll notice here, this is two and a half, two and a half units, okay? Here, for this particular one, not comparing it to that one, Notice that it's 12 units, so you can tell it is a much larger length. I'll talk more about that in a moment. In release uh, 13, line types um, were added, complex line types were added to AutoCAD release 13. They were finally incorporated in release 14, which made them part of the complete package. And this also introduced the L-type shape file. Um, this is a, SHX stands for compiled shape. SHP is what a, so there was an LT shape dot SHP file that this was compiled from. And basically what it is is these characters that you're seeing represented here, okay, this would be called circ1, this would be called box, and track one would be this bar symbol and so forth. These were compiled into the shape file, and this is where we get the definition for the characteristic of the text of that line type. If you take a look down here for hot water or gas, we have verbiage, gas in this one, for example. So this will tell you in the line time it says gas, and it's using a standard font. Those are complex line types, and we're probably used to those as well. For user-defined line types, which is where I've placed mine, the reality is you could create your own file, give it an extension of LIN, and you have a custom line type file. I've put some additional notes. This file will be available for you later. Uh, I put some additional notes in this one, the uh, semicolons. They indicate that, um, hey, this is where I just want to put some text to explain what I've done, all right? So um, that's all it is, is a note field. And then we have the line type itself. The asterisk tells AutoCAD that we have, uh, that we are at the beginning of a line type. 
VC dashed, separated by a comma, VC dashed. Um, basically, the VC dashed is the name you are telling AutoCAD that this line type is called. Okay, um, it needs to have this name, and then separated by a comma, you are giving a description field. So this, in that load line type dialog, you're seeing the name of the line type, and then under the description, this is the description of the line type, so here VC dashed. All right, you can leave out the description, but you have to have that name. The um, description for this here is assigned through um, just by using some underscores and um, de uh, spaces and maybe a dot. You know, for example, up here we have a dot, so I've just a put a period in there, uh, that would represent the dots of the line type, and it's just a basic description. You'll see I've, I haven't updated this at all, uh, so my description just makes it look like a couple of dashes and longer dashes. In reality, what this line type here would be is a short dash, a space, another dash, um, I'll talk about those in a moment, but it also has some dots in it, which I did put in the description. Uh, actually, we could probably do that right now. I'll just put a period here. And just for grins, I can't remember if this is how it looks in the real world, and I'm not looking at my definition right now, but it's that easy just to make a description change. But this is where the where everything is happening right here on this line. Um, the letter A stands for alignment or alignment assignment. The bottom line is um, you need to have this. There is no other letter to be using for alignment. Okay, it's just the letter A. You're always going to start a line type with the letter A. And this alignment is crucial because it specifies how the line type starts. You always have to have either a dash or a period. And the period, uh, of course, indicates a dot. You always have to have one or the other starting a line type. So in this case here, I've said, look, for my VC dashed line type, I want a dashed line of 0.25. Then I've separated that with a comma, and I've given a negative value of 0.25. So basically, this gives the dashed line, and then it creates a space of the same length. Let's go ahead and make that the same length right there as the dashed line. And then I've separated that with a comma and said, I want a dash that is going to be half a unit long. Now, everything in a line type, before I go on, is defined by one unit. Okay, so this is one unit, one inch, uh, uh, if you want to look at it that way. Um, but it it is one inch long. All right, so here I've then said put another da um, dot, and then I've put in a zero comma. The zero indicates um, uh, the... Um, the dot itself, sorry, I may have misspoke earlier. So dash, space, dash, space, dot. <laughs> okay, so I didn't want to confuse anybody there. Then another dash, or space I mean, a dot, and another space. After that, it repeats. Oh, sorry about the messages, folks. Um, thought I turned everything off. I obviously didn't. All right. Um, so after that, it repeats. Now, let's say uh, that you want to be consistent in your line types. A lot of times I'll see line types. Somebody will have started it with 0.25, and then they end it with 0.25. 
Well, what that does actually, it creates a longer line of a half unit long. All right. Um, you want to either have it be no continuation of another line or start off with 0.125 here and 0.125 as a length here in order to have a consistent beginning and end, if that makes sense. You know, see in a moment, I guess, when we draw this line. Either way, uh, if you add a 0.25 line here and a 0.25 line he segment here, you're going to get a half unit long uh, beginning and end of a line. All right, well, I hope that kind of made sense. We'll see in a moment. Let's take a look at complex line types. There are three different types. In the past, um, AutoCAD 2011, uh, around that time, we had a uh, line type that was relative, okay? Which meant that no matter how I drew the line work, the relative or absolute, can't recall right now, but no matter how I, yeah, it was absolute. How I drew that line type, regardless of I, how I drew it, uh, the text would always be in rotation or uh, in the same alignment with the object. That is, if I drew a circle, the text at the top was readable, the text at the bottom was upside down. Okay, 2011 changed that, and it provided for the upright line type. And what you're going to see is right here, this U, which defines that position. So these are complex line types that I have here. And again, this is a lot like the simple line type. It starts off with the letter A. Well, first of all, it starts off with the asterisk, the line type, name for AutoCAD, and my description. Letter A, half a unit for a dash, half a unit, uh, uh, point 0.2 units for a space. Then it has the text that I want. You need to enclose that within quotes, separated by comma. All of this, of course, is preceded by this bracket, an open bracket, okay? Anything within these brackets right here is the complex part of the line type. So opening bracket, quote, the text I want to see, quote, comma. Then you tell it what font you want to use. Um, and not font in this case. In this case, it's a style. And this is the safest way to go. Not everybody's going to have the same font that you have. So you want to use something that is consistent. Standard is always a consistent style. This here is the scale or the text height as it appears. So in this case, 0.1. This could be 0.125 if that's your standard. Upright always, although you can assign a previous rota a rotation value as your default upright. Where it's positioned in that line type on the X and on the Y. And this is where you may need to do some tweaking, all right, um, after you create a new line type because of the text you're using. Um, you may need to adjust the Y within the line or the X within the line. And then, of course, closing bracket. So I've done the same thing here on these three, except this is, has a rotation, and this is absolute. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. Whoops. Oh, that's because I have it open here. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and save the minor changes I've made. And we'll go ahead and load these line types. This time, I'm going to go ahead and load them all at once, but I'll also use the Layer Properties Manager, and I'll just go to my line type here, go to Load, and this time using, whoops, need to change to that line type too. It always defaults to ACAD, L, the default one. I'm going to go ahead and change it to that, and I can use my Shift key or even the Control key to add and remove from the um, from the uh, line type dialog. 
I'm going to go ahead and click OK here. I've loaded all four of those. Click OK. So I'll go ahead and assign my absolute line. I'll go ahead and assign, assign my dashed line. And that's my relative. And then we have upright. Go ahead and set a couple layers current. One, Well, we can only set one layer current, obviously. So let's go ahead. I've set the upright current. And I'm going to go ahead and type C. I'm just going to go ahead and copy these. And I'm going to just change the properties of these real quick here so we don't redraw them. Oops. Dashed. And finally, absolute. So to show you the difference here, this is the VC upright. And so here we have upright at all times, whereas this is your default AutoCAD relative, and you'll see anything down here is readable, but as soon as we get up here, it's unreadable. So I explained that backwards earlier. This one here, uh, yeah, I don't know why I'd ever want to use this VC absolute. Uh, probably not for a circular object, uh, but maybe if I'm um, drawing straight line work like this. Okay. Oops. Might help if I change to the right layer. So you would have something like that. Now, the key to all this that you need to be aware of is that a lot of the legacy drawings you're working with do not have this functionality assigned to it. So if you aren't getting the look you want for the default line type, like your gas line, uh, you're expecting it to say gas all the, all the way around. Well, in that case there, you would um, want to reload the line type from the line type file, and that's pretty easy to do. I'll go through that in a moment, and then we'll start taking some questions. Here's that custom line type that I created. Let's take a look at this. So it started off with a um, a line segment of, whoops, where we go? There we go, 0.25, okay? And because it starts with 0.25, it's also ending with 0.25, so that gives this a total of 0.5. Then we have a gap of a negative 0.25, right? And then we have a, um, where, where'd it go? Oh yeah, I start, sorry, I started off at the wrong end. <laughs> Let's start off at zero here for my uh, for my gap. Let's start off there instead. Sorry about that. So zero for the gap, 0.25 for the um, uh, for the gap here. 0.25 for the gap here. We have zero for the period. 0.25, zero, and then it goes to 0.25, and that will give me an ending value of 0.25. There's also, as I extend it, that other get, uh, length of 0.5 comes into play as well. I've just repeated this actually one more time than I needed to. But as you work with this stuff, you'll need to tweak it. Let's say I want to get rid of this 0.5 here. I'm going to go ahead and do that, and I would also need to get rid of this gap because I can't really. All right, actually, let's do this. We'll go ahead and put another zero in there, comma. 
and I'm ad-libbing. Don't ever do this, all right? Most of you learned from my mistake. I still haven't. Let's go ahead and go LT. And in order to update my line type, I have to reload. L. And I'm going to go here. I could reload them all. I just need to reload the one. I click OK. It prompts me, do I want to really reload this? Yes, I do. So once I do that, I'll click OK. And I'll do a regen. And notice how the line type has changed. So there are a lot of um, a lot of particulars about line types. We definitely didn't have a chance to cover. Um, so I'm going to show some resources to you here, and then we're going to take some questions. Um, now these resources are. Uh, let's go ahead and go here, and we should almost be ready to see my other screen. There it is. Okay. So for additional resources, obviously we have um, some of the community, uh, Autodesk Screencast. There are a lot of videos there about this stuff. This about line type link, command for line types, about line types and line type definitions are in the AutoCAD help. You're going to get as good of an explanation out of these three links as well uh, as you would out of any book that you purchase or read online. These are very complete about line types. So check those out. Um, uh, again, the links are in this PowerPoint. There's also um, a reference here to an article on AKN about this particular error. We see this a lot. And basically, your um, AutoCAD line types that are created from the complex line type set, use this L-type shape. And often we get this error saying, hey, this particular line of uh, fence line, um, bad definition, you're not going to be able to load it. And so what happens is that um, maybe that file is corrupt or um, you are using um, um, uh, you don't have that particular shape file available. There's also a couple other reasons. Uh, more often than not, uh, people will have um, used a different line type file in order to load this particular shape. Um, so if it's not available, you're going to get this error as well as some other uh, error uh, solutions which are provided in this particular article. So be sure to keep this as a reference if you're going to be messing around with your line types. By messing, I mean customizing your line types. I always mess with them. Um, I just realized I didn't show this. <laughs> this is the L-type shape I was talking about right here. That's where that error comes in all the time. Okay, so if you get an error about this fence line right here, uh, it, it's a chance that this is corrupted, the shape file, or it's not in the right location, or you've made a syntax error, something like that. Uh, the solution is this article. All right, uh, today we had the look of line types. Next week, AutoCAD Answer Day. Be sure to check it out. We'll be there. After that, Steve Bissett, who I'm not sure if he's on the call right now, he was going to try and join us to help answer questions. Uh, he will be doing an introduction along with uh, Victoria Studley, who is on the call, I know that for sure, uh, to 3D modeling in AutoCAD. So uh, that'll be good. Um, still haven't made up my mind yet. We'll keep you in the dark on those two webinars. Hopefully you'll join us, though. Uh, they, there will be updates on the landing page, so check that out. And having said that, I'd like to run one more poll and then take your questions. And hopefully, uh, yeah. Yeah, so let's uh, run the poll real quick. And just like always, want to see if you've learned something new today. I did. I'm not a line type expert, so this is good for me. And uh, looks like the vast majority of people did. 
and I'll just give it another minute or a few seconds here. All right, well, that's good. So uh, again, most people seem to have learned something, so that's great. Yeah, it's good news. Um, I always feel bad about those who uh, didn't learn a thing in one of these webinars. We know your time's valuable, and we hate wasting it. So um, hopefully next time we'll have something for um, to show you that might throw you up for a loop. Okay. So, so I got a I got a, a couple of questions. We have a few minutes here, yep. and maybe I can learn something else new because I've never heard of this before. Somebody is asking if you're going to cover multicolor line types. Um, I don't know what that is. But. Yeah, there, there's really uh, so in AutoCAD LT we have what is called the D line command, which allows me to create um, double lines. In AutoCAD, we have the mline command, and it's in a way it's better, but it's limited, and we don't have that command in AutoCAD LT. Um, we can certainly put multi lines on a list um, when we do our next one in Auto, uh, webinar in AutoCAD. Uh, in fact, I'm thinking we should just do a potpourri um, uh, webinar where we go through some of the functions which people have asked about, which we can't really promote a whole webinar on, does that, if that makes sense. So um, multi-lines, they're cool, they're limited, um, but you can also work around with them. Um, so the to answer your question right now, we're not covering multi-lines, no. <laughs> um, but we can in the future. Right. Um, and do you know if there's any issue using annotative text and custom line types? Somebody says that they uh, have lots of problems with annotative text. Well, uh, the line type itself is looking at the shape file or the font, and everything in the line type is going to be dictated by the LT scale, South scale, or MSLT scale. So there shouldn't be any issues because you're actually, um, uh, and you know, I haven't tried it with a style, but since the, you know, so a style is where we assign our annotative scale to. Anything within a container is going to, the, the container is going to be the dominant object. So the line type scale should still override any annotative style. I'd stay away from that anyway and use something like standard, which is not annotative, or my, actually my preference would be to use a uh, style that is unique, um, but annotate, uh, standard is the safest, or use a font like Arial, Tahoma, Verdana, something which is consistent across the board. Um, but there shouldn't be a problem with annotative objects in a line type, no. Okay. And I think uh, you know, most of the other things uh, we've been answering pretty good on the online here, so we've got a lot of that covered. Um, as far as uh, you know, asking about uh, you know webinars and different products, um, you know, we, I guess we're ex experimenting with which products to, or investigating which products to have webinars on? Yeah, actually, um, uh, that is a, um, we were just talking about it yesterday, and we're actually probably in, I think it's around the July, don't quote me on this, uh, you know, it's still, we're still working out the details, but somewhere in July, uh, we'll probably start a webinar using um, AutoCAD Mechanical, um, so that would be our, one of our first um, webinars, and uh, we'll be doing other verticals as well, yes. Okay. Okay. Well, uh, we're at the uh, top of the hour. I guess we can uh, end the official presentation and stick around for some additional questions. I think we will do that, so I'm going to go ahead and... Uh,